Hello comic book fans and welcome to Cammy's Comic Corner. I'm your host, as always, Cammy. Now, before we get into today's episode, just want to remind you all that this episode's contest is being sponsored by Virgin Comics, and you can check out more of their stuff over at virgincomics.com, but I'll get into details on that at the end of the show. Meanwhile, spoiler alert, I'm going into detail and in-depth in on many of these books today, so if you don't want anything spoiled, pause, go read them, come back, and I'll still be waiting here. It's like, it's like I'm on TV or something. I don't get it. You can just pause or... Anyway, moving on. Today's pick of the week is The Avengers Initiative number 13, written by Christos Gage and art by Steve Uwe. Now, the last uh, issue of The Avengers Initiative, we found out that all the students that we were lovingly following their careers graduated. Now they're a part of the 50 State Initiative going off to various states. In this issue, we are introduced to a new batch of troops. So this is what the, the book's going to be about, is pretty much seeing all the up-and-coming troops go into training, and then you'll see them in various other books. Smart move. In this new batch, we focus on one cadet, Emery Schwab, a.k.a. The Boulder. Now, Emery is your typical fanboy in the Marvel Universe. Any superhero who comes across, he knows, like, their stats, their other aliases they use, who they fought up against. Like, when he, when he gets introduced to Yellow Jacket, he just has a fanboy moment. That's like going to a comic convention, meeting one of your favorite artists or writers, and then just geeking out in front of them. I did to Paul Dini last year. More on Paul Dini later. And in this issue, Boulder, very, he, he's, he has superpower. He's indestructible, pretty much. You can't suffocate him, you can't drown him. You can't stab him, you can't shoot him, you can't pierce his skin. He's just pretty much immovable, hence Boulder. So Taskmaster, one of the teachers, trying to train him in the new cadets, you know, he's kind of had, had his wits end because he knows all these stats about him, Taskmaster, and he can't, he can't gain weight, or he can't gain weight, he can't lose weight, he can't build up muscle, he can't fight, he can't do anything. He's just a movable blob. You know, so they're not really appreciating his powers, and you know, it's understandable. But in the end, as the, all the cadets sneak out for, you know, a, a night of drinking and skinny dipping and all that, a task force to hunt down Taskmaster comes out into play. They try to get Taskmaster, a big battle ensues, and in the end, they hold Boulder hostage. They say, better stand down or we will shoot this kid's face off. The, the, the uh, teachers say, you know, go ahead, and pretty much he's immovable. Issue ends with they have to send him home because Emery isn't much use. He can't do anything. He's just there to absorb things, and, you know, he'd just be better off in civilian life. So Taskmaster and Constrictor, they pose in one last parting shot and make him feel good about himself, that, yes, he truly is a hero. He just can't do heroic things. Very fun issue. Nice little... Uh, Wife beater mentioned when uh, Hank Pym is introduced on the bus. That made me burst out laughing because uh, he beats his wife. And you know what's funnier than that? On to the fast five. First up from Image Comics, we have Dynamo Five number thirteen. In this issue, we have an origin story on Myriad, the man of a thousand faces. It seems he's kind of like a scroll of the Image universe. Anyway, we find out that his mom was actually an extraterrestrial, an alien, and apparently, to Captain Dynamo, you know, aliens can do too. They got a hole. Why, why not? So he was the love child of Captain Dynamo and an alien mother. So he was kind of a half-breed, half and he couldn't live on their planet still. Next up from Vertigo, we have Scalped, issue number 17. Jason Aaron finishes up the Dead Mothers story arc, where we find Bad Horse come to grips with Diesel, who killed the kid that we met a few issues later, trying to get revenge on his mom's death. And Diesel, of course, gets away, but this time with a few bullet holes. So even though he's in custody and Dashiell can't touch him, he still, he still felt what Dashiell was bringing to him. And Dashiell finally comes to grips with his mom dying. He just has to be drunk when it happens. And in the end, we find out who actually killed Dashiell's mother. Very fun issue. Next up from Image, we have Hawaiian Dick Screaming Black Thunder, number three. In the past few issues, the Black Thunder air pilots have been in Hawaii trying to put on a show, but were shot down by a Japanese kamikaze pilot who's been dead for the past 20, 30, 40, 50 years. I don't know. I can't tell time. Anyway, they think the trick to keep the, bear, uh, the pilot dead 
is to give them a proper send-off, which they do. They light the plane on fire, and turns out it's not the proper burial, because the plane just flies off in fire now. So now they have a fiery Japanese kamikaze pilot on their tail. Great. That's exactly what they need at this point. Next up from Marvel, we have Ghost Rider number 23. In this thrilling conclusion, he battles the nurses, he almost gets Zadkiel, and unfortunately Lucas can no longer help him. But Lucas commits suicide, and Ghost Rider can't find Zadkiel anymore. So he kills the next person he can get his hands on, which happens to be Cannibal, who is responsible for the deaths of all those at the treacherous highway we met in issue 1. Well, 21. So, after that sacrifice, the curse is lifted from the highway, and he and Ghost Rider goes on to find Zadkiel once again. And finally this week, we have Madame Mirage number 6, written by Paul Dini. Apparently, I was not informed of this, I don't know why I wasn't in the loop, this was the last issue. I thought it was just the end of the first arc. Apparently not. But anyway, in this fun, fun, action-packed issue, sisters are kind of reunited with their father, and the bad guys put away. Um, I don't really want to go much into detail because I think it is a really good book and I think when the trade paperback comes out this summer or fall, everyone should go pick up the trade paperback. It's stunning art by Keith Rock Rockenford and beautiful writing from Paul T. Well, that's just a bit for the Fast Five this week. Now on to the Virgin Comics contest. Remember, comic book fans, if you want more Virgin Comics goodness, go to www.virgincomics.com where there you can preview all the first issues that they have out with their exciting widescreen digital comics reader. So just go to virgincomics.com, go to the digital comics section, and you can read all their first issues in beautiful widescreen format. Also, tune into their trailers on new and upcoming books in the video section. Lots of fun at virgincomics.com. Once again, thank you, Virgin Comics, for sponsoring this contest. Now, on to the actual contest. This week, we once again have up for grabs, because I got three copies to give out, Ramayam 3392 AD Reloaded. This is, Silver Bullet Comic says, is an epic in scope, grand in size, and legendary in feel. And keep in mind, I will be reviewing this book in an upcoming show. Also, we have a Devi up for grabs, which is be between the divine and the di diabolical, there is Devi. And also, someone will be getting the first two issues of Buddha, and then the first three issues of The Stranded, which is a sci-fi channel, Virgin Comics exclusive. So if any of those titles sound good to you, send me an email at camiescomiccorner at gmail.com. The first couple of emails that come in, get any one of their choice. So be sure to email me in telling me which ones you want. Well, comic book fans, that does it for Cammy's Comic Corner this week. This is Cammy's Comic Corner. I've been your host, Cammy. Have a good week.